I'll tell you what the ultimate form of not well-being is, is when your brain is rigid and you believe you're right. Uh, that's to me the sign of a pathology. I'm talking to Ruby Wax, a uh, famous uh, comedian, uh, TV host, interviewer, author of books and ambassador of um, training your um, brain, muscling your mind. The Art of Soul for Living is all about the, the triangle of body, mind, soul, because we believe at Rituals that you have to pay equal attention to all three of those. So I was wondering, um, the majority of people pay a lot of attention maybe to their physical appearance or their, their physical health, their mental health is actually also on the rise that people become more aware. And, and we think that people should also start paying a little more attention to their inner, is it inner health, to their soul, yeah. to their, their own true uh, nature. Well, everybody calls it something else. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, one called the heart, maybe some people call it the soul, we call it the soul. Um, I was just wondering, how do you, What's your view on that uh, vision? Well, it, there's a triangle. You know, the, the mind feeds the body, feeds the spirit. Though that's intangible, but it, of course it does, because you're learning to be kind, so that fuels the body with certain hormones, yes. and that affects the mind again. So you're on, a, as I said, the brain and the body are a onesie. You can do top down or you can do bottom up. Either you um, start doing exercises to provoke this, evoke this kindness, which is a chemical. Let's not kid ourselves that a mother gives to a baby when it's born, that's how its brain grows. It's this, the love and the googling and the holding it creates this oxytocin, which helps the baby soothe itself. So again, if your mother misfired, there's exercises for you to learn to soothe yourself, which that's how the cortisol, the hormone comes down. And that feeds into the mothership. Now you could do exercises that start there, where you're dealing with your mental health, and that, of course, feeds into your physical health. And I said it's the same thing. They all feed into this thing called the spirit, because that's kind of the kindness that you're uh, even bothering with. And I, to me, that's maybe my definition of spirit or soul, is the coding of this compassion. If that isn't there, none of this works. No, I Either your body's gonna rebel, or your brain's going to rebel and say, you're giving me even more pressure. So you're really seeping yourself in self-compassion. On that journey towards well-being, what should be the first step? Is that about self-compassion? Well, if there was self-compassion, everybody would be doing it and the world would be in a better shape. We regulate each other's um, hormones. So if we're near people that care about us, it, it happens automatically. Correct. But now we're living in a place where it's each man for himself. Yeah. So it's very hard to forgive yourself because you're competing with Mrs. Um, somewhere across the room because she has nicer teeth <laughs> and somebody else has more money. So it's hard to forgive yourself. I had trouble with um, compassion. I used to call it the C word. Yeah. <laughs> and when I was at Oxford, I said to my professor, especially because I have depression and we usually we beat ourselves up for it like we'll stigmatize us before anybody else will. I said, I have real trouble with this compassion thing. And he said, well, the fact that you can sit and listen to that horror show, imagine every day, he knew what was going on in my head. Because uh, of course you talk about it. If you can sit there patiently and let it go, just listen to it, he said, that's self-compassion. And then again, you learn that if you can be kind to the horror show in your head, not always horror, but on the yeah, worst science, days, yeah. then, um, and then you can do compassion to somebody else. You cannot give compassion until you hit it yourself. Otherwise, um, you might get compassion fatigue. How would you describe the ultimate form of well-being? I'll tell you what the ultimate form of not well-being is, is when your brain is rigid and you believe you're right. Uh, that's to me the sign of a pathology. When you, <laughs> somebody said, when you're neurotic, you think you might be God, and when you're um, a psychotic, you know you're God. <laughs> 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 um, so I think if you're really rigid, like some of the people I interviewed, and they believe their reality is the only reality, that ain't well being, and they're suffering too. Part of attention is it's being stolen these days because of too many, I said, we live in a, um, a time of 
surrounded by weapons of mass distraction, the things that mean the most, because I was distracted, um, I, I lost out on. So I was so obsessed with getting a good career uh, that I spent my kid's childhood on the telephone. My son used to hit the ceiling and I'd go, I'm off the phone now. But I was still on the phone. There are days, you know, it just gives you an, an observer point of view. I know they're talking to me, but I also know I'm typing. So now with the overview, I have a choice. I can either talk or type. So you really have to practice looking into somebody's eyes and really imagining what their life is like. And once you make that rapport, then you're connected. If you don't, forget about it. You can try and sell them as much as you want. Because it's not authentic. Right? They don't buy you. They don't trust you, and that's the end of it. I think it's so um, special about also that authenticity part is you can't fake it. You can't fake real attention. You can't fake real love. You can't fake real compassion or empathy or all that because you will instantly feel that it's not real. We are contagious humans. You know, I always say we work like neural Wi-Fi. So if you're looking at me and I feel you like me, I'll like you back. Yeah, but I, if you're just talking to me, I'm dead. On a well-being scale, where would you, uh, let's say it's one, it runs from one to ten, where would you place yourself right now? The dictionary defines it as a state of being happy, at ease and content. I'd so say in ease that and level. content, because I think we misunderstand what happy is. Yeah. But ease and content, yeah. And on, on that level, where would you be from eight, one to ten? Uh, as much as I can be easy and content, I am. But I'm really ambitious. And so I know that's one of my triggers. And I just have to um, forgive myself for it. Because some of the times the outcomes are pretty good. So Not an eight, always. An eight, maybe, on your well-being scale then. That's of maybe content. eight, yeah. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Or seven, and some days two. Well, next time we're going to talk about the brain. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, that's, a, that's really a fascinating and interesting, uh, I think, and you know a lot about it. Uh, so, uh, thank you for now. You're welcome for now. <laughs>